this video, we're going to take a look at Ulf playing the Four Knights symmetrical English. And notice his move order with the early G3. There's a couple of different ways black can try to hit you. Say, for instance, with D5, we're going to grab Knight C3. And I like Ulf's handling here. Queen A4. Already we have the potential of Knight E5, so Bishop D7. And this next move is the main line by far in the database. Queen e4, bit of a provocative move. Knight e5 anyway. And already Ulf's got an imbalance in Anderson Barrientos 2004. Now on to the main event. Knight c6, g6. And I like this move order. Very, very important playing d4 here. Because for instance, if knight c3 and then d4, this is the, the typical stuff. There are move orders available that if black plays d5 immediately here, this can end up being quite drawish. Say the main line that's been going around it's castles, and then bishop e3, bishop d7, knight d4. And you have this position, which the engine gives zeros to, and you can see many, many examples in the database. So Mamadiarov, Ivanchuk Mamadiarov, so Anad, to name a few, all of which are draws. So I, I really like Anderson's move order with the immediate d4 taking away that d5 drawish line. The move order matters. If you want to avoid that line, this is the move order. Otherwise, you could very much get this type of position. And this is the, the typical position that you get. You should know a few things here. An easy rule is if you're confused, play e3. Typically, they're going to take on d4, which we're going to see in the main game. But say, if a6, this is an absolutely terrible move, c5 puts them in a positional bind. Black wants to play b5 or d6, and he can't. He loses a pawn either way. So this, this wins almost 90% of the games in the database. You can take a look at any example game. <laughs> White's just torturing their opponent. If they play an early d6, I'm not a big fan of the gambit play and accelerating my opponent. I'm just going to go knight c2 and generally just get a solid position. And sure, you, you want to play against me where I'm going to get a nice outpost and just get a slightly better position. This is definitely the Ulf Anderson way. And easy does it. We have control over d5. They don't. We'll put the rooks on d1 and c1. Then we have the, the queen moves, queen b6 and queen a5, both of which can be met by e3, and e3, b3, bishop b2, sometimes h3. And that's your general structure with facing queen b6 or queen a5. You can get more critical with knight c2 or knight b3, but the e3 lines are just fine for our Ulf repertoire. Now on to the main event. We'll have the main line by transposition, followed by knight takes d4. Then a critical moment here. You want to get your queen off of this diagonal. So simply queen d3. We don't worry about bishop f5 as we have e4 and we have this nice Maroxy bind set up. And on moves like knight d7, Bishop b2, knight c5, queen e2. Very solid, straightforward play. In this game, the main line was played with a6. And it's important to know where the pieces go. This bishop on c1, you have a few different squares, and there are a number of different lines, but my personal favorite is with bishop d2. And this is... A critical idea because it takes away a lot of these queen a5 queen h5 i just want to attack lines 
because the immediate queen a5 is going to be met by knight d5. So following the main line, rook b8. And now it's important to note where the rooks go. Rook a c1 is the best move. It seems natural to put this rook on d1, but this is a major issue for white because bishop f5, e4, bishop g4 is now going to create a concession in the pawn structure. And the only two games in the database, black wins both after f3. Very, very important memory marker in development here. Don't put the rook on d1. Rook a c1. Here, bishop d7 has been played in many games. Bishop f5, which was played in the main game, is the main alternative. And here, a very interesting idea with c5, followed by bishop f4. And this line is doing very well for white, solidly. Black hasn't won any games. White has just it's a teeny amount. So very important move, c5 in there. Bishop f5 was played in this game, and yet again, we have our theme with e4. b3 seems very solid. There all are alternatives here. And Ulf's opponent here needs no introduction. This game was played in 2006, and he was playing with the boss before he was the boss, Magnus Carlsen. So let's see how... The 2542 rated Ulf Anderson has no problems against the 2675 rated Carlsen in this game. B5. Sure. You can take. I don't have anything to worry about here. No weaknesses. Queen B6. No weaknesses. And I think this is the perfect style to play against a young, hungry player. Queen A5. No weaknesses, no problems. Here, king h7. This is another way to play. But king f8 was played in the main game. Takes, takes. And I don't think Ulf was too much in the mood against his young opponent to press too much here as they agreed to a draw. But on another day, I bet Ulf would have continued this. Maybe he was worried about having to get into a knight versus bishop ending. As we've seen, I feel like he favors the knight, <laughs> which is probably why he offered a draw and it was accepted. But at no point in time was there any trouble, and you can press these types of equal positions as we've seen time and again. So hopefully I've highlighted in this video a lot of the major themes of playing the four knights English.